Da -da, da -da. We're going to a new area. Perplexing pool. Yeah, the perplexing pool. Now, I know you just watched the Pikmin One Let's Play just just last week because you love our content that we create. Uh, the perplexing pool should look very familiar because this area was in Pikmin One. You ever look at a body of water and just go, huh? Huh. <laughs> That's a very perplexing pool I see right there. Uh, the area has changed a little bit. It's uh, definitely got some more ups and downs, and it became more of a gigantic puzzle than just an open puddle of water. But, you know, that's alright. We'll, we'll get to figure it out. There's also a surprise. A surprise? What could be waiting for us at the perplexing pool? Well, why not the yellow Pikmin? I was about to say another ridiculous, uh, promotion. <laughs> yellow Pikmin brought to you by Snickers. You're not yourself when you're hungry. I was, gonna, I was gonna say maybe Sour Patch Kids. You know, that would be more fitting for the Yellow Pikmin because they have been given a new ability in this game. Tis quite nice. Now let's actually uh, switch out some of the reds because we are going to need our whites today. I'm just thinking of that Skechers, Skechers, Snickers sketch that I just came up with, and I, I can actually visualize it where, you know, you got a purple Pikmin just, you know, get, getting really mad, and, you know, he's being a stompy boy, and then a red Pikmin comes over and says, Purple, you're not yourself when you're hungry, and then he eats a Snickers, and then he becomes the white Pikmin he was always meant to be. I was gonna say it's a bunch of Pikmin and a Fall Guys guy. And he's flopping around, you know. <laughs> They're like, Steve, Steve! What's going on? You're not yourself when you're hungry. Here, have a Snickers. Better? And then he goes, better. And he's the imposter. And he stabs them all. <laughs> you know, I kind of love that Fall Guys and Among Us are some of the most popular games out there right now. Because this just shows that you don't need the most advanced graphics out there. You could just have, like, little bean men just running around, killing one another, or just, you know, falling into goop. And people will love it. Graphics are only good for the time. A good game is good forever. See, I just recently got a PS5, and all the games I have are, like, gigs upon gigs worth of downloading, and, you know, they got the big graphical updates, so I was like, so, uh, all these graphics, do they mean anything if the game's not fun? See, I'm waiting for that one game to go, well, I guess I gotta get me a PS5 now, and it hasn't come yet. Uh, chances are it won't come for a while. I mean, you know, nothing against the PS5 or the Xbox Series X, but then again, the Xbox Series X never had any games to begin with. See, at first I thought it was going to be Resident Evil 8, but then they were like, nope, it's coming to PS4. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Then I, thought was, then I thought it was going to be the new Oddworld game, but nope, that's coming to PS4 as well. I'm like, oh. See, I don't understand that tactic. That just seems like such a big waste of money, in my opinion. Like, hey, we got this new awesome hardware, but you can play it on the old stuff. Then what's the point? My guess, they want developers to make bigger, better games with their new technology. And they don't want to alienate the, the fan base that they do have right now that, you know, probably isn't doing so good financially in these tumultuous times we have right now. So mm -hmm. a lot of the games that they do have can be scaled down a little bit to run on older uh, consoles. The thing is, though, they still want your money. Because each console is half a thousand dollars. And, you know, they're s s 
more scarce than the original Wii was. So my guess is that, you know, you make the sexiest game you can to make it run on the best console you can, and then you scale down the graphics options and that can run on PS4. Well, hey, hey, PS4 and PS5 owners, can you get this type of logic? You see how the Pikmin are beating on nothing in this cutscene? Yeah. They're actually still killing the monster during this cutscene. <laughs> so the longer I stay on that screen, the more damage it does and it just dies. <laughs> <laughs> so you know can't do time that. is weird in this place. <laughs> These Pikmin can master more than just, you know, sticks and grass and twigs. <laughs> They've mastered time itself! Yeah, I'd like to see that happen on the PS5. <laughs> and, you know, if we're still on the topic of the next-gen consoles, I kinda do want a Series X. Because you're an Xbox fan. Well, I'm an Xbox fan, and you know, I hate myself. But uh, I also want to see if it can uh, make Cyberpunk run any better. <laughs> <laughs> I already know it won't. You should just give up. <laughs> I know. But I'm, I'm so hopeful for that game, even though it's a pile of trash. I'm holding out hope that one day it'll be good. It's not gonna be like No Man's Sky. But good five years after it's prime? Ooh, that's some lag. Oh! Too many things happening. Oh, no. Look away. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's... Just turn your back, Louie. It's okay. Oh my god. Don't look directly at the lag spike. Louie, no! <laughs> You'll create a time paradox or, you know, a pocket dimension. Maybe I'm too old, old school, but uh, I kind of like lag spikes when stuff happens. It's interesting to see what can actually cause a lag spike, honestly. Like, I'm playing Age of Calamity on, on Switch, obviously. Mm. And whenever I do some crazy awesome move on a whole bunch of enemies, the frame rate just goes to, like, three. <laughs> <laughs> but somehow that makes me feel like that I had impact. Like, I was like, oh, yeah! Like you tore a hole in the dimension or something like that. Like, you did a move that was so horrifically powerful that... Not even time itself could fathom it. Yeah, and I grew up on PlayStation and N64 games. Oh, yeah. Sometimes 20 frames per second is the best we ever got. <laughs> okay, so this is going to sound, like, insanely stupid. But, uh, you've played the original Pokemon Snap, right? Yeah. Okay, so... It, uh, I was, a, I was to... a Pokemon fan in the 90s who had an N64. Okay, Of so course yes. I did. Yes, definitely Snap. So, uh, try to remember the opening cutscene where, uh, Snap, or Todd, whatever his official name was, he's just walking through the forest and he eventually finds Mew running through? Yeah. That opening has frame rate dips. Like, whenever there's more than, like, two polygons on screen, it just dips and does weird things. If you actually watch it again, and I think it still does it in the Wii U version, the opening pan is, like, 15 FPS... But the main character walking for that, like, one and a half seconds of frame is 60 FPS, and then it just nosedives back into potato. <laughs> it's really funny to see. 3 animation in those days were a lot different, too. And the N64 itself is like the Wild West. Like, people still can't get N64 emulators to work right. Yeah, the Wild West, if it was like, you know... In, a, in somebody's backyard because, you know, those cartridges did so much, did so little for the games. No. And in fact, I recently had to install the expansion pack for the N64. Ah, uh, the expansion pack. I had no idea what that little red thing did when I put it in my console for the first time all those years ago. Yep. All, you know, all the, uh, all the ads say, it's like, it enhances your games, it increases the power of your console! When really, it's like, we didn't put enough RAM in the thing, so here's the RAM. Yeah, we made the game work properly. 
And I'm trying to think of how many games that actually enhanced. Like, I know Donkey Kong 64, it came packaged with it, which... Oh my god, that's a lot of money spent. But, uh... Didn't it only basically enhance, like, some of the later Rare games? Like, in the... Uh... Like, right at the, uh, turn of the year 2000? Well, you had games later on in the N64's life that couldn't run without the expansion pack. Right. So all it did was increase the RAM, so that way it could just run that much better. Okay. Like, Majora's Mask had that. Oh, yeah, okay. That's, that's a very good example, actually. And I already mentioned uh, Donkey Kong 64, it needed it in order to run. It was the game it was made for. Yes. It's like, oops, we, we, we made our monkey game too big, what now? And Nintendo's like, oh my god. Fine, we'll make a thing for it. I really liked Donkey Kong 64 back in the day, like, I 100%ed it way back in the day. And I heard it described years later as the slower Banjo-Kazooie. And now that I've actually played Banjo-Kazooie, I can say that, oh my god, you're absolutely right. I never beat the original Donkey Kong 64, it just took too long. It did, but I had a lot more patience back then, and time. I will give uh, a small shout out to Nintendo, and the Wii U of all things. The game actually runs a consistent 30, I believe, on the Wii U Virtual Console. Same with uh, Pokemon Snap. Because I got like a hundred expansion packs in the console. <laughs> Can you imagine if the Wii U had just like a port for multiple 8 megabyte expansion packs that you put in there? It's like a clip of, of controller packs. <laughs> just slide into your Wii U. <laughs> or maybe you could, like, daisy-chain them together, like, snap them on top of one another. Look at all the memory. Alright, so, uh, do you remember what the yellow Pikmin did in the original game? What their special ability was? Being yellow. Uh, they were- they were yellow, yes, they could be yellow. But, uh, more importantly, they could be thrown farther. Or higher, I guess I should actually say. Uh, Yellow Pikmin have... I, I believe this was an original ability that Nintendo wanted to have in the first game, but they, you know, saved that idea for later. They are your protection from the electrical elements. They uh -huh. have static electricity in their body. They've been magnetized! Essentially, yeah. So, these little guys now have more than one effect. And, uh, I believe they're still the only Pikmin that can handle Bomb Rocks, but I can't remember if Bomb Rocks are even in this game. So, uh, we'll get to that later. And I know for a fact somebody is already in the comments saying, of course Bomb Rocks are in this game. Or of course not, you idiot. Ooh. How many times do you think we repeat ourselves during series? I hope it doesn't happen often, but I'm sure it happens from time to time. When it comes to when a series is currently airing to the moment it ends and people can watch it in like a long playlist or whatever, I'm always interested to see people's reactions to, uh, like let's say for example some of our longer series, and how it took forever to finish them, but then people take like a day and watch the entire thing. Such is the struggle of the artist. Yeah, they they capture us repeating ourselves sometimes, if if it happens at all. You know, they they see the uh, the goofs that we make, and that's probably why I don't remember half of the things that people reference in the comments. They're like, hey, remember when you said, uh, no, I don't. I, uh, Honestly, I don't. I need a time code, buddy. <laughs> yeah, because I, I just can't remember that stuff. But for a lot of people, like, uh, we recorded Resident Evil 6 over a year. And 
the only way I remembered some of the stuff we said is because I was editing it. So, uh, I don't know, it's, it's just an interesting thought. Hurry, hurry! Oh, this sucks. Uh, I'm not gonna have enough time to pull these yellow Pikmin, damn it! Three! Oh. That's okay. Two! They'll be left behind, and You're we'll dead, pick them up son! the next time they're here. No! Crap. Oh well. We'll get them the next time we're here. Still haven't got the blue ones yet. No, and that's what kind of perplexed me. Again, I haven't played this in a very long time. The blue ones are actually the last color Pikmin you get. Hmm. So let's see, that form of logic, you need the reds to get the purples, you need the purples to unlock the way to get to the whites, you need the whites to get to the yellows, and then you use the yellows to break down the gate to get to the blues. It's a good thing we're get we're talking about Pikmin, because otherwise that would sound very xenophobic out of context. <laughs> I wouldn't dare. Okay, I love this. I thought we went through the happy Hokutate savings and loans, but we went to the old devouring black hole loan sharks! Ah! Uh, the president is indebted to loan sharks. Yeah, I would like to tender my rec my resignation immediately. We're gonna get letters from the debt collectors just saying, Hey, you want your boss's left hand back? You're gonna have to pay us up, right? Or, you know, speaking in Hokutate, Left hand! Olimar opens up a letter he gets. And it is a bloodied finger. <laughs> and Olimar's like, come on. He throws him with the rest. <laughs> How many presidents has this Hokotate Freight had? <laughs>